How's it going guys? I thought I would give a quick update to the last video I did where I was talking about my uh, game room setup and go I saw some of your comments so I thought I would go over some of the uh, concerns that you had. So one of the main things that people were asking me was that why am I not using SCART and RGB and I wanted to explain what the deal is. So this is my frame meister and pretty much all of my systems go into this then they come out of the HDMI and that goes into the game capture. That's how I've been doing things. And this over here is my switch box. Now for people that don't know anything about you know RGB and all that, basically RGB would look a lot better than um, AV. And, and I'm aware of that. But the thing is, is I have so many different systems that I needed a switch box. I wanted an easy way to be able to switch between the different systems. Just to be able to really quickly hit a button and then you can play the different systems. And that's what this switch box does. So when you're asking the question of why I'm not using SCART, um, you gotta remember for one thing that I'm, I have all these different systems that you know I'm trying to have hooked up at the same time to a switcher so that I can easily switch between the games. And you know, if you, and if you don't know um, what I'm talking about, like here, I've got NES on here and NES I have on one. Now watch, I'm gonna switch to two, watch what happens. Boom, switches to two, switches to three, and we got Smash Brothers over there. So this is really an easy way for me to be able to switch between the consoles. So I think that this thing's really great. And if I were to switch to RGB, well, it, or SCART, it wouldn't, the SCART wouldn't plug into this. But unfortunately it is um, AV, it's not, you know, RGB. Now certain systems, especially like Sega Genesis, really benefit of the look when you have uh, RGB. Now here's the reason that I'm not doing that. SCART, basically, uh, there would be an adapter that you could plug in um, to the Sega Genesis, which could go into here, and then there's a an adapter to go from SCART to HDMI, which would then go into the Frame Meister, right? And I haven't bought it because, you know, I feel like um, it's not gonna work for me because it's not gonna do what I wanna do. So basically, the SCART to HDMI adapter would go into the HDMI input, and then out from that, out of the Frame Meister, it would go HDMI to the game capture. That would be fine, but the problem is I'm trying to, when I'm sitting there playing different systems, I like to hit the different buttons and be able to switch between all my different consoles. So really the problem is that I have so many different consoles, I'm looking for an easy way to set up um, so many different consoles. Now, the other thing is, well, SCART tends to be mostly a European thing. As you can see here, that you know, the televisions here usually use um, HDMI or AV or composite. And one other thing I can say is, if I did upgrade everything to SCART, um, it's not like I'm just trying to upgrade one console. If I was just trying to do it to my NES here, that's one thing, but you gotta remember that I'm trying to do it to like 35 different consoles that I would wanna do it to, so it would also be expensive. So those are a lot of reasons why I haven't yet upgraded to uh, you know, RGB. So the other thing is that I know that there actually are um, SCART switchers, so I could actually switch this box out for a SCART switch box. Those things exist, but the only thing is, is any of the quality ones that I've seen are kind of expensive and I would need multiple of them. I probably need at least two, probably three of them to hook up all my different um, systems. So it would be expensive just to get the boxes and then the other thing, which I could get, but then the other thing on top of that is all these wires, these AV cables would have to be switched out. And honestly, it's like, is it really worth changing my entire setup just to get a slight graphical upgrade? I mean, I think that the, you know, the way the videos have been is fine. I mean, sure, it could look slightly better. I'm not denying that. But is it really worth changing every single wire I have? I have multiple switch boxes, and each one of these has eight, you know, switches on it. You know, one through eight. So I can hook up eight consoles on this one, and I can hook up eight consoles on this one. You know, 16 different consoles right there, and I have more than that. So we're talking about I have to buy you know, multiple um, SCART switchers. But the problem is the majority of the SCART switch boxes I found 
are only like four or five um, ports, and that's not enough ports. So it's like I'm I need some kind of specialty SCART switch boxes because I have so many consoles. So long story short, what I'm trying to say, the answer to why I don't have RGB and SCART and all that stuff is really because I have so many systems and I'm trying to hook them all up at the same time. So yeah. So just to clarify, I would like to upgrade everything to RGB and SCART, but I the answers I really need are how can I do it for 30 plus different consoles? Um, that's the main question. I, like, I don't want to have a switch box that only has five or six switchers. I need to be able to do it for 30, not like five or six. And I know I could probably daisy chain the SCART adapters together, but then it's like more wires and I already have too many wires as you can see. So really what I'm looking for is a good SCART, um, switcher that has a lot of switches on it. So that I don't have, you know, not daisy chaining 8 million, you know, SCART switchers together. I don't want to do that. And then, of course, the other big thing people were saying is, you know, your wires are a big mess, <laughs> which they definitely are. Why don't you clean it up or why don't you use twist ties or something? Um, and sometimes I do, like I have tw tw twist ties around some of them. But the reason I don't have twist ties are on around everything and why it's not a little bit more cleaned up is because I'm constantly moving systems and consoles around like I might have to take a system over to James house or who knows what so or I might have to you know move one of my systems over there or so the fact that I'm always always moving systems I have a hard time you know wrapping up the wires because things are always moving around and also because of filming reasons like we might have to have the camera see sometimes I have the camera there and sometimes the camera's over here on this tripod. So it kind of just, the room keeps moving and changing depending on different things. And another reason is I'm constantly giving, getting different consoles. Like when the Nintendo Switch comes out, that's going to be another console to get that I'm going to have to try to make room for. Or if I get another Atari console or whatever, you know. So that's, that's why. Another kind of funny response I saw to uh, the lighting setup was that uh, people are like, oh my god, you shine the light right in your eyes when you're filming. Actually, what we really do um, is I will turn this, you know, I can turn this in any direction and a lot of times we'll point it, you know, we don't point it right in our eyes, we'll point it in a different direction so that the light is hitting us uh, softly. So don't worry, it actually, the lighting is fine. <laughs> A few people were asking about my custom-built PC, which I didn't really elaborate on. Uh, sorry about that. I have an Intel Core i7-6700 processor with 32 gigabytes RAM. It has two GTX 1070 graphics card, so that way I'm able to live stream and run the HTC Vive. I thought maybe I'd just go through some of my NES games too, see if I have uh, any, any thoughts. Uh, people always want me to talk about different games in my collection. American Gladiators is that game that has the crazy... Uh, really hilarious scream funniest scream in a video game i think it's it's awesome we've mentioned that before uh bayou billy was a game that i think i rented from blockbuster video or a local uh, video store when i was a kid and that's just a terrible game um that i don't like at all um athletic world i don't think i've played much arknoid is is a classic that you know it was an arcade game yeah, of course but this is the NES port, and the NES port I really like. It came with a special uh, controller uh, for it, but it uh, can be played with the regular controller. I don't recommend Bible Adventures, <laughs> but I mean, it's not... Actually, Bible Adventures isn't, like, the worst NES game or anything, but it's definitely not good. Yeah, it's definitely not good, but speaking of one that's definitely, definitely bad, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, this game is truly one of the worst NES games there's just nothing good about it. It's awful. Boy this Blob, that, that's actually, you know, a lot of people want a video on that. I actually don't think that that's a terrible game. It was de um, designed by David Crane, who actually worked on Pitfall on Atari, and he um, also did, um, he worked on Kaboom and a bunch of games, but um, this I don't think this is a terrible game. A lot of people don't like it, but it's one of those games that you have to kind of figure out what to do. I think it's a a pretty good game. I don't think it's an amazing game, but I don't think it's a terrible game either. Um, I think people are a little harsh on that. This is a really good game that I've I, I've talked about it before in my NES uh, video. If you've never played Bucky O'Hare, definitely play it. One of the reasons that it's great is because it has a lot of um, different playable characters. Like you can switch to 
um, I don't remember all their names, honestly, off the top of my head, but there's a lot of different characters that you can switch to, and they have different abilities. Um, a great, great game. And there you go, Konami. Why would it not be great? Cliffhanger is a game that I've played. I played this at a convention, actually, with James at one point, and look at that cover. God, I saw that movie in the movie theater. This game is not good at all. Um, it just sucks. I don't know what else to say about it other than it sucks. It's just not a good game. Double Dragon, obviously a classic. Gotta have Double Dragon. Double Dribble. Double Dribble. That game is, um, that game's pretty fun. It, th that was one of the first Nintendo games that I had. And like I said, I'm not really into sports games too much, but this is one I would actually play. I'm nostalgic for it. And look, look what they fucking did. Look at that. Can I get that off? Let's see if I can get that off. I'm gonna do that right now. I know that you can, like, oh, there's methods to get this shit off, but who the fuck would do that? Maybe it was somebody that didn't like sports. Maybe that was the thing. Maybe I did it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, that's annoying, though. I hate when they fucking do that. And then there's this. Like, come on. Why not put the stickers on the back? You have the whole back that has fucking nothing on it that you could put the sticker on, and then they put it right over the label. The middle of the label. Fucking... That, oh, I hate that. That's one of the worst things. If you own a game store, don't do that. Dracula's Curse is a very hard game, but it's a very, very good game. This is, this is something I could talk about, you know, for a while. But if you own a Nintendo, gotta gotta have this. And I don't know if Dracula's Curse is on um, the NES uh, Classic that's coming out. I forget, but if it's not, it should be. Um, Bionic Commando, another really, really good game that I like a lot. Uh, I've beaten this game. Um, in my spare time. This is a great game. It's also the game where at the end, spoiler alert, um, Hitler's head blows up <laughs> and it's really ridiculous. Felix the Cat. There you go. This is a really good game. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. I mean, I just like Felix the Cat, I guess is one of, one of the main things. Uh, he's a great character from the silent era of cartoons and um, I just like the character, but the game it itself is pretty good. I remember it not being too hard of a game, but, you know, pretty pretty good game. Gyromite, um, my feelings on Gyromite are like, you know, with Rob the Robot, um, you had to, like, wait a long time for the arms to move back and forth with Rob, and I had Rob as a kid, and basically it, it was like, you're, you really want to just play this with a friend, because you can put the, um, these, uh, platform things up and down much quicker, if you have another person, even if you, you're holding uh, the controller in your other hand, it's it's better. Rob, I think Rob just really wasn't that great, but Gyromite was like an okay game. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't hate Gyromite or anything. Uh, the Godzilla game is was pretty crappy. I had that as a kid. Um, Ghoul School, that game sucks. Golf, <laughs> golf's okay actually. Good game to play with your dad. <laughs> uh, Ghostbusters. Uh, pretty much sucks. Ghostbusters 2 is better. Um, Gunnack is a really good game. This is a little bit of a rear, uh, a rear game. This is a little bit of a rare game um, now. It's amazing how much the prices have gone up on NES games. When I bought this game, it was probably like, like under $10, you know, but that was a long time ago. Now this stuff goes for a lot more money. But yeah, Gunnack, if you like shooters, um, Really, really good. I've talked about it before, though. Guardian Legend. Um, unfortunately, my label is ripped up a bit. And speaking of the Guardian Legend label, the European version of the label is actually a lot better than this label. This is an ugly label, but a great, great game. Um, it should be in every NES collection. Talk about another game that should be on the uh, NES Classic. Uh, I'm telling you, Nintendo, if it's a success, do NES Classic 2. And this is one of the games you're going to have to put on it. Uh, Rockin' Cats is a game that I just did a video about with Ryan. Um, I really like this game a lot. It has uh, good controls, uh, but not not the best music. There's some things about it that aren't that good, but pretty good NES game that not a lot of people talk about. I would recommend it if you like you know, a game with, that has good controls, basically. Um, oh, God. This now this game is one of the worst. It's just I mean I could do a whole video about this honestly. This game is one of the worst Nintendo games. Um, the just they they put no effort into this. Home Alone was a successful movie, and they just 
crap this out and put absolutely zero effort into this game. It's really, really sucks. Um, yeah, so that's a terrible game. That's like Bill and Ted level, that game. It just blows. Mylon Secret Castle. Uh, this is a game that I've actually uh, beaten. I own this as a kid. And I, I don't think, you know, I didn't really like this game as a kid, but it's one of those games that I just played over and over and over. And I actually did not beat this game until a couple of years ago. I tried it again. Um, I guess probably around the time when we did the nerd video, um, I think. And I don't hate this game. Uh, it's just, it's really, really cryptic. And there, it's, it's not a good game, but I don't think it's like the worst game either. I kind of enjoy it in a sort of weird, sadistic way. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know if I can recommend it, but... Mm. Yeah, I probably can't recommend it, but I kind of like it in a weird way. Again, another good game to have in your in your NES collection. Oh, now Adventures of Lolo. This is a game that doesn't get enough love these days. Adventures of Lolo is a great, great, great puzzle game. Um, this might even make my top 10 list, honestly. At least top 20. I love Adventures of Lolo. This is a game I could play all the time. I also really enjoy puzzle games, though. I mean, you know, Legend of Zelda, you know, going through the dungeons and figuring all that kind of stuff out, you know, is you know, one of my favorite games. So Lolo um, is totally a puzzle game. And if you like to solve puzzles, definitely pick this up. I highly, highly recommend this game. One of my favorites. Uh, Mega Man, obviously. Uh, I like Mega Man. A lot of people... A lot of people hate this game, actually. Um, I mean, the cover is fucking shit, uh, obviously. But f looking, you know, aside from the cover, uh, it's a hard, harder Mega Man game for sure. But it's... I, I, I like the game. I think it's good. Mega Man 2, I definitely think is better. You know, no debate there. And honestly, I think 3 is better as well. But I do like the first Mega Man. Um, if I had to rank them... It would be 2, 3, then 1. So, good game. Not the best Mega Man game, but definitely definitely good. It's a, just a little, like, sluggish, and, you know, it didn't have the slide and a lot of that kind of stuff that came later um, that made the series so great. Kari Warriors fucking sucks. It's too slow. The music's repetitive and annoying. Uh, here we got Ninja Gaiden 2 and 3. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 is a game that I actually beat one time with James. Um, there's a picture of us. Uh, when we beat the when we beat this game, it's the easiest of the ones on the NES. Uh, I, I think so, at least. Um, not that it's an easy game; it's not. But it's uh, I think it's easier than the first one, and it's definitely easier than the third one. Uh, it, this is a really good game. Um, definitely, you know, people talk a lot and shit kind of shit on the first game, you know, for some of its annoying flaws, but. Uh, this game I like a lot. It's it's really great. Ninja Gaiden 2, if you ever see it, pick it up. It's it's fun. But Ninja Gaiden 3, um, this is a game that I've made it all the way to the very, very end of this game, um, to the final boss. I remember playing this game and doing the levels over and over and over, and I, I think I had it on pause for a day or two, and I kept coming back to it. Um, I really, really enjoy this game. In fact, all the games on NES, all the Ninja Gaiden games, Ninja Gaiden 2 and 3, I think they're all good games. Sure, they're, they can be a little flawed here and there, but they are, uh, you know, little issues and things that are annoying about them. But overall, I think they're great games. Um, so definitely pick up all three Ninja Gaiden games if you're an NES collector. I'm not going to comment on every single NES game because this could be a million hour long video. Uh, Ninja Turtles, like I've talked enough about that. Only thing I have to say about Turtles is get the scrolls. That's all you need to know. Uh, Bart vs. Space Mutants. This is a game that a lot of people hate, <laughs> rightfully so. Uh, I, I kind of hate it too, to be honest with you. I played this a lot when I was a kid because I watched the first probably like four or five seasons of The Simpsons religiously. I had this game. I had Simpsons like action figures and everything. I love The Simpsons growing up, and this game was a disappointment because of game design and all, all sorts of issues that this game had, but in a weird way, this is one of those games that even though it's not a good game, 
I sometimes find myself playing it because it's kind of like you kind of got to look past how crappy it is and try to just beat it anyway. It's a really tough game. Um, actually, very, very hard. Um, but uh, I would actually, like, if you see it, pick it up and, and play and try to beat it. Uh, you know, I'm fully admitting it's not a very good game, but I feel like it's worth playing. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> Here I've got uh, Zoda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2. You know, Star Tropic is a game that, well, here you go, right behind. I was just going to mention Legend of Zelda, one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, you know, Star Tropics is very, very much like the original Legend of Zelda. If you've never played a Star Tropics game, totally, this should be in every NES collection, Star Tropics and Star Tropics 2. So definitely pick up Star Tropics. So I hope that answers some of your questions about uh, my game room setup. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have more questions or if you want to see anything else, let me know. Thanks for watching.